Hi there and welcome back to the Mindful Model Makers uh, workshop. We're going to carry on from last night. So this is the piece I cut out. I've marked it. I didn't think you wanted to see me. I found the centre um, and there is a cross in the middle. Now what I use is a ordinary centre punch, quite a very uh, a narrow one. And with engineering, the best thing to do most of the time is to feel things. So you can put it in to where and feel it in the middle. Now it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Give it a good tap, like so. And you will find that there is a little pop mark in the middle, which is all you want it to do. All right. Now I'm going to move the uh, camera, so you're going to get some movement and various other bits and pieces whilst I angle this up. And now you can see um, the pillar drill that I use. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take this over now because this. Make sure it's plugged in. It is because this is quite long and it's not a very big drill I'm going to hold it but if it's quite a thickish bit of metal and you've got to um, uh, drill a biggish hole then clamp it because what happens if the drill bit snags in whatever you will tear your hands to pieces but because this is soft so what I always do is make sure there's enough of the jaws to bridge either side. Move it around until it looks. Now, even if this is a little bit off where it needs, you can make adjustments when we fix. So I'm going to turn it on. This is a variable speed one. And the belts are inside there and you can move them around. Right, so what I'm going to do now is to try to get that in the centre. And again, just kind of feel it. Right, I can feel that sitting in that bit now. And I'm just going to hold that and just gently, you'll see the swarf coming up. And if you can get that more or less in one continuous bit, you know you've got roughly the right speed and the right pressure. And that's now through the hole. Okay, turn off and that's it. So that's it. Now, if you were to try and do that with an ordinary drill that you use for drilling holes in walls and things, you could be wandering, you could be holding it at an angle. But at least here, I know that the table is square. You can put a level on here and level it all up if you want to. Um, it has got an angle thing on it, so if you've got to drill things at angles, you can do that. This isn't a very expensive. I might try and find a link for it um, and if you're interested in buying one. Now obviously when you when you do drill underneath you get a little burr with a little bit of swarf. Swarf is the name given to the material, the waste material that comes out. Um, and when I was an engineer um, they used to collect all that up into like a big type skip and uh, it used to go away and remounted and reused. Um, because obviously it is a metal, or in this case, this is an aluminium. Right, so that's it, really. I've now produced that piece um, the same as the other one. And if I find that this hole is slightly wrong when, when I fit it, I can adjust it. So when it fits on the back, I just get the bit so I can explain to you what I'm talking about. So when I fit the bogey on uh, to the front, if that bit's wrong, I can adjust it by moving it up and down the wood at the back. Because what I'll do later is drill a couple of holes in that, not into the wood, but just into the alley. And then I can move this about to get that spacing correct at the front. And then once that's done, I can then put some glue underneath here. Um, you can arrow dye, you can super glue, and then I will pop through and then use perhaps a wood screw or something to, to go into there and fix it down onto that. And then that will set that. You've still got a little bit that you can bend this very slightly if the bogey is perhaps not down on the rails enough 
or it's too high and you can bend it down a bit. So you've got a little bit of leeway left in this bit um, to adjust. So that's where we are on this on this next bit, um, ready to do that. So all I'll do is mark out, put some holes in this one and in the other one. Then I put it down. <clears throat> I put the body loosely over the top with the bogey uh, in the hole to fit. I'll just show you how that works if you want, just to show you. Um, it's not rocket science, but uh, there we are. So there's the bogey. Then what you do is you pop that across and it clips down in like so. And you can see it's it's got lots of play. So there's nothing there, but it's not going to pop out. You can put a washer on there if you want to, a washer underneath if you want to. That's entirely up to you. Um, but I found that um, there, there's a lot of play there once, once it's down. So as long as that doesn't snap off, um, which I haven't had one yet, you've got lots of movement. So you can see all of this. It, it really does give it the kind of room. Um, obviously, when the side's on, it's not quite so much, but it's surprising how little movement it actually needs. And because don't forget, there's a bogey on the rear as well. So that's moving about. So um, it's not all just with the front one because obviously the, the rear bogey. I'll just explain one little bit about that, which I didn't explain. When I glue this on, because it's a rivet that goes through underneath, the rivet comes up underneath the piece of wood. Now, if I just poured the um, araldite across that, that would have then set in the rivet and this would have locked solid. So what I did, I got a bit of um, black insulation tape and I just put that across and then put the glue and then the wood on the top. So there's a piece of insulation tape that actually goes through that so that I've still got all the movement I want on this rear bogey. So that's what I do, because otherwise the glue would have stopped it from moving and then, because I've got to try and prise that off, clean it all up, and uh, it would have probably been quicker to get another chassis and uh, fix that up. So there we are. That's where we are on that. So I'll just probably drill the holes later in this and start getting it fixed. And then I can show you the next bit. I'm sure you don't want to watch me drill four more holes. That's two in each bit. And then fix that on. But the rest really is done by eye. The body goes on. The bogey goes up underneath. And I just fiddle around um, until... There's the bit down there now. I just fiddle around until this is more or less where I need with the body on the top. And then you can see how it moves around. So that's um, how I utilise old coaches and a very modern motor bogey, which is very powerful. So this is off of the Hornby Eurostar, if you hadn't been following me from the beginning. Um, but they are, the, they are the ones. I do mill off the sides, cut bits of plastic because I want to lose as much plastic as I can so that it allows more movement. And then later on, I want to glue false shoe beams onto the side um, because obviously it's electric stock and it picks up with a shoe beam. So there we are. That's where we are for tonight. Um, and then we'll just carry on until these, this forecast sub is completed. And uh, then I'll have to put a, get a bit of free rail together and show you it running just to prove that it does work. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, if you like this, please like. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. And then you can see the rest of the model as it takes place. Any comments, please put them in the comments and uh, I'll reply to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much. And I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye now.